Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here. Now pumpkin adds a wonderful seasonal flavor to pancakes, but oftentimes that pumpkin puree that you add gives you pancakes that are gummy, thin, and flaccid like this version I have here. Today I'm gonna share with you my recipe for pumpkin pancakes that are light, fluffy, and full of those wonderful autumnal spices. Let me show you how. I'm gonna start with my dry ingredients here. Now I have one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour in my bowl, and to that I'm going to add those wonderful autumnal flavors that you associate with pumpkin. And that is a half teaspoon of cinnamon, this is ground cinnamon, a half teaspoon of ground ginger, an eighth of a teaspoon, about, of freshly grated nutmeg, and I like to use a nice piece of nutmeg and I like to freshly grate it myself, it really adds a punchier flavor than if you buy that store-bought ground nutmeg. That looks pretty good. And then last but not least, I'm gonna add a tiny little pinch of clove. Now, ground clove is very, very strong in flavor, so you really wanna make sure that you're not using too, too much, especially here in an item like a pancake. Now, in addition to the spices, you have to add a little bit of salt. Now, whenever you're baking, this is kind of a version of baking, right? Salt really helps to bring out all of those wonderful flavors in a lot of sweet items, so don't be shy. And this is a half a teaspoon of coarse kosher salt. In addition to the salt, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of double acting baking powder. Now again, double acting baking powder, it acts, as the name suggests, at two different times. When a liquid ingredient is mixed into your batter, it'll start to create little bubbles. In addition to when the pancakes hit the heat, which I'm using a griddle here today, that will then create even more leavening. So it acts at two different stages and it'll give you a nice, light, and fluffy pancake. And I'm using two teaspoons of baking powder here because I need a good amount of leavening to contrast the density of the pumpkin. I'm gonna also add a little bit of sweetness. This is two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Now I'm gonna to mix together my dry ingredients and I'm really glad that I'm adding a little bit of spice here, guys, because I really think this helps to illustrate how much kind of stirring and whisking you need to really incorporate all of those dry ingredients together. Now, sometimes with leavening agents like baking soda and uh, baking powder, they're white, and when you mix them in with flour, you don't really see how much you need to mix them to evenly disperse them through your flour. And this is really important because you want your pancakes, your breads, your cakes, whatever they might be, to rise evenly. So make sure you really do mix in all of those ingredients nice and evenly. So our dry mixture here is all set to go, and now I'm going to mix together the wet ingredients. Now, over here I have one egg, and the egg is going to help bind together the pancake batter. Now, with all of your wet ingredients, you wanna make sure that they're at room temperature. You don't want anything too, too cold. Otherwise, when you go to put this on your griddle, the cold batter is gonna take much longer to cook on the inside. The outside will become overcooked and the inside will be gummy. So room temperature ingredients are really important. I have two tablespoons of melted and cooled butter. This is unsalted butter that I'm adding into the pancake batter here. Now the star ingredient, I have six tablespoons of pumpkin puree. This is canned pumpkin puree, you guys. And in the marketplace, there are a lot of really great quality pumpkin purees that you can buy in this form. Now the most popular brand out there uses a specific type of pumpkin in their pumpkin puree, which is called a Dickinson's pumpkin, which really has a fantastic flavor and a really creamy texture. It's actually more similar to what we know as a butternut squash, the Dickinson pumpkin, than the other varieties of edible pumpkins like the cheese pumpkin or the sugar pumpkins. We have done a really great video on making your own pumpkin puree, so if you wanted to try that at home, you certainly could check out that video, but the canned version is really good as well. And consistent, which is important. I'm just gonna mix this together, and then I'm going to add one cup of whole milk. Now this whole milk here, again, is at room temperature, all of my ingredients, and then just mix this together until the pumpkin's nicely combined with the other wet ingredients. All right, so this looks good, you guys, and now I am almost ready to start cooking up my pancakes. Now, 
One secret ingredient that I like to add when I'm making pancakes, whether they be pumpkin or just your standard favorite buttermilk pancakes, is a little bit of extra leavening coming from some whipped egg whites. Now, I'm gonna whip these egg whites before I mix my batter together because I don't wanna overmix this batter because that is going to give you a tough and gummy pancake. So waiting to mix all this together until my three components are ready is really important. Now, whenever you're whipping egg whites, you wanna make sure that they are at room temperature. Room temperature egg whites whip to a greater volume than if they were cold and they whip much faster too. So our egg whites are nice and silken. It's a very, very soft peak here. Now I don't wanna over whip this. I don't want these to be stiff peaks because it will not be easy to fold these into my pancake batter if they are too stiffly beaten. So now the next step would be to mix together my wet and dry ingredients. So I'm gonna pour in the wet ingredients right into the center of the bowl here. And at this point, you guys, you really just wanna to mix together the wet and the dry ingredients until the batter barely comes together. You want, and you should see clumps in your batter. And don't worry about that. They will work their way out as this batter sits. And when you cook your pancakes, if you overmix this, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be oversaturating uh, the flour with all those liquid ingredients, which produces even more gluten here, and your pancakes will be tough and chewy. So look at the batter, you can see there's bits and chunks of flour here, and that's totally okay. I'm gonna stop mixing at this point. Now I'm gonna switch from my whisk to my spatula. I'm gonna give my egg whites just one more little whip here, and I'm gonna fold in these beautiful silken egg whites. Now, egg whites add a whole nother layer of leavening to your pancakes. All of those air bubbles that you created by whipping the egg whites, what they do with heat is they expand and they will leaven our pancakes really nicely. So you won't end up with anything that's too flat. It'll add really nice loft to your pancakes. So I'm just folding this together gently. Again, folding is kind of moving your spatula around the side of the bowl, up underneath your batter and folding over the top in this motion here. And you wanna do this, we say gently, but also quickly because you don't wanna deflate your egg whites too much. You built up all of that wonderful, great volume. And now you just wanna to fold together the ingredients, but do it quickly so that we're not losing too much air. Now that looks good. I'm gonna stop mixing here and I'm going to attend to my griddle. Now I'm using a nonstick griddle here and I like to use griddles when I'm cooking pancakes because the heat is so evenly regulated. I have this set to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but you could certainly use a nonstick skillet or even a cast iron skillet on your stovetop. You just have to make sure that you're maintaining the heat so it's nice and consistent. So I'm gonna grease this with a little bit of butter and I have a paper towel over here. And really when you're making pancakes, you want to use as little fat as possible. Now I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna take actually some more butter on this side and we can do a comparison and I can show you if you have too much fat, what your pancakes will look like. And I'm using a quarter cup ice cream scoop. And I like to make smaller pancakes. And the reason why, you guys, is that smaller pancakes cook evenly. If your pancakes are way too large, what happens is the outside cooks at a faster rate and the inside is still kind of struggling to cook. So they're gummy. And that's really one of the things you wanna make sure that you're using a smaller amount of pancake batter and you will have evenly cooked pancakes. So these pancakes will take about a minute to a minute and a half to cook on one side. And really the way that you can tell whether or not they're ready to flip is once you see the edges of the pancake drying out slightly and you'll see little air bubbles forming around the sides, that's when you're ready to flip your pancake. So don't fuss with them right now, let them cook gently and you'll know when they're ready. All right guys, so you can see around the edges of the pancakes here, they're starting to dry out and um, little bubbles are popping up through the batter and this is when you know the pancakes are ready to flip. Now, I'm using one of these flexible fish spatulas here. Um, you wanna make sure you're using a thin spatula to flip these guys and you wanna 
be courageous here, slide underneath the pancake and give it one good flip. Now these are the ones that have that have been cooked in the butter and you can see this really visual design on the top of the pancake and that's from the excessive amount of fat. So again, you won't get really great browning or you'll get a lot of uneven browning if you use too much fat. Now our other pancakes on this side, let's see how they fared out. You can see the browning is much more even here and that's because we were only using a very limited amount of fat on our griddle. So now these are gonna take about a minute to cook on this next side here. And one of the things you wanna avoid, and a lot of people do this when they're cooking hamburgers and also pancakes, is that once they flip them, they tend to take the spatula and just push down on the pancakes for some reason. But you wanna make sure that you let them cook undisturbed so that they really can leaven and puff and that you're not inhibiting any of that leavening by pushing it down with pressure. So again, these will cook for about maybe 30 more seconds. All right guys, so it's been about another 30 seconds and I think our pancakes are done. I'm gonna put these ones, these unsightly ones on the bottom, but you can see that these pancakes are really nice and fluffy compared to our other version here. Those egg whites really help. Now remember all of those tips and tricks, you guys, when making your pumpkin pancakes, and you will end up with the most delicious, lightest, fluffiest pancakes. Look at that, you guys. That looks amazing. These are super hot. They're burning my hands, but I'm gonna give them a little bit of a try. Mm. Really rich in flavor, but light in texture. Give this recipe a try. We'd love to hear from you. Write in the comment section below or reach out to us using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. Enjoy your pumpkin pancakes, guys. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.